We have a lot of drama in the banking field just over the last week, over the weekend. This is a developing situation. No wonder we have a growing number of states who are forwarding legislation to allow their citizens to reclaim their right to use silver and gold as legal tender, as was outlined in the Constitution. Today, we're joined by Pat Holland. He knows a lot about what's going on in Missouri, but also other states in regards to this legislation. He's also up to speed with the banking situation, I guess I'll call it. And he has a lot to share on that as well. Pat, welcome to Ron's Basement. Hey, Ron, thank you again for having me back in the basement. Hey, yeah. I, I noticed that the silver bear is not uh, is not by the uh, gold bear right now. Are you keeping him <laughs> separated for a reason? He's He's sitting on the silver pot back there. Okay, the silver, gotcha. Okay. Silver plated, silver plated pot, I might add. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering if they were getting into a fight or something like that, you know, silver, gold, you know, taste great, less filling. If something like that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, okay. So what, what's going on with the banking field? It's like top, you know, big news right now. Do you have it any is. insights into what's going on? Yeah, kind of. Um, and the banking system right now is uh, in once again, broad general terms, what I'm hearing is this is maybe more of a derivative problem than it is a capitalization problem. And, and once again, uh, this is the, the same type of thing maybe that happened in 2008, except we don't know what derivatives are in trouble right now, what the original product is, because it could be anything, couldn't it? I mean, right. for all that, it could be cattle futures that are right. causing the problem. You know, we have a problem with cattle. It could be uh, pork bellies. It could be chicken. It could be silver. It could be housing. So we don't know. And no, these, these, these derivatives, just to, for my viewers, uh, as I understand them, they are kind of contracts that banks will have amongst mm -hmm. themselves to kind of insure kind of insurance amongst themselves or, or bets against themselves. And it's a massive, you know, I've heard quadrillions market. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. know Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett called them, uh, what did he call them? Financial instruments of mass destruction. Correct. And if you talk to a New York banker, they'll call it a fancy financial product is what they'll call it uh because this is okay uh just to set the framework here just to set a you know a, a grid pattern here for people to understand um it's it's make-believe so it's it's something that they can create out of nothing like the federal reserve prints cash they don't have a, a basis of value to create that cash out of other than a fancy piece of paper from the federal government which they call a bond and then the federal reserve sells that bond you know to the member banks but you're right this is how it works if you let's take silver because you know you and i both love silver a lot sure so the comex holds physical silver and and this is where literally the futures contracts come from in other words the 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 futures contracts on what silver is going to be worth based on demand and when they first started it it had a good uh a foundation for actually its existence now they uh, it's been hyper financialized it's been um you know it, because the derivatives are way more than the physical but so you have an ounce of silver in the comex let's say there's an ounce but what the comex will do is they will put out maybe four to 500 futures contracts on that one ounce of silver. So yeah. everyone who buys those each has a claim to that ounce of silver and it's not fractionalized. That futures contract is for that full ounce. So it'd be like if you sold your, your you were selling your car, you sold your car to 400 people. Mm -hmm. They're not each gonna come and take a little part of your car. They want the whole car. That's what they paid for. Yeah, so, I, heard, I heard somebody once talk about it with the McDonald's drive through It's like if you ordered a hamburger and went through and the person said, well, we sold that hamburger 400 times yep. uh, over. And maybe yep. not the best analogy. Yep. But it's the same concept. So that's what a derivative is. So the original product is that ounce of silver that's that's hanging out at the COMEX right now. And then the first derivative on it would be the futures contracts that are created. But then people will bet on whether or not those contracts are going to go up and down in value. So you have yet another leg of a derivative off the first derivative. 
And then people will create bets on that original bet. Now you have three legs into that derivative. And that's why they say the derivatives world, the derivatives bubble is somewhere between two and four quadrillion dollars in value. But right. it's actually worthless. It's worthless because it all is based on that single ounce of silver. And before long, you have, you know, for a single ounce of silver that we could buy now for 30 bucks, you know, there's literally, let's say something crazy, like $1 million worth of money riding right. on that single ounce of silver. And that's what they use to, you know, basically destroy the price of silver too, is by putting out way more futures contracts than they have physical to back it up. But he's spoofing the price too. I mean, that we can get into technicals and all that fun stuff. But, but the reason we're talking about this is because uh, it, there is a high likelihood that there's a derivative problem that's causing the banking sector issues we have been seeing in the last 48, 72 hours and okay. may continue into next week. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. And, and the, to put things into context, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank was... I heard the 18th largest bank in the United States. So it's maybe not one that we've all heard of because yeah. most of their customers were concentrated uh, as the name implies and, and high tech startup, I think 50%, high tech startups. Yep. 50, 50 of the venture capital tech startups, biotech mm -hmm. startups had a partnership with this bank. So it's not mm -hmm. one that guys here like in Missouri would have heard of. But it was the 18th largest bank in the United States. Uh, and prior to that, let me, let me just throw this in. We had Silvergate earlier in the week that we did. decided to liquidate. They were highly involved in the cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and fintech area, which is, mm -hmm. the, you know, a, a crypto related. So just in the la in last week, I, I thought it was interesting that we had this, you know, kind of. Silicon Valley Bank, which was all uh, uh, startup tech startups, and then also Silvergate, which is crypto. It's like the whole tech, small. Te it's it, it, the, the what's supposed to be such a strong growing area uh, is having some serious financial problems. That's correct. And if you couple that, and and by the way, I mean there's several points to this problem, in my opinion, but. If you couple the fact that the federal government has a spending cap right now, they can't mm -hmm. print more money to fund their operations right now. And part of their operations is the exchange stabilization fund. There we go. I got it out. And yeah. the plunge protection team. For those of you who are unfamiliar with these concepts, these are based in the United States Treasury, and they have a checkbook from the Federal Reserve where they can create money out of thin air to stabilize markets if they should have problems, if they're undercapitalized, if there's a derivatives collapse. So they can print money real quick, stuff it where it needs to be stuffed to somewhat stabilize the market which is totally anti-free market, obviously, because, because one of the serious issues we have here because of the dollar is we have, um, let's just say, um, we have a serious problem with malinvestment. When you can continue to print money, you know, and we saw this with Netflix, we saw it with Tesla, we see these stocks going so overvalued. I mean, we're talking about, uh, you know, what it would actually be worth, how long it would take to justify the, you know, buying the stock at that price. Mm -hmm. And these issues we're dealing with here and derivatives as well, not just stocks. This is a highly fluid situation, but it's very, very precarious right now, because I we don't know what is causing these banks to fail. In 2008, we had more information. Right mm -hmm. now, we don't. But uh, I've I've heard rumors that the Federal Reserve is meeting with member banks right now. Yeah, and and I've and I've heard that um, a big part of the reason is also, uh, you know, these banks over the last five or ten years invested heavily in U.S. Treasuries and were required to invest heavily into U.S. Treasuries. Okay, so if you think about it, they were buying a lot of Treasuries a year ago, two years, not that far back, that were yielding almost nothing, right? I mean, they were mm -hmm. the, the interest rate. Now, the fact that the Fed raised rates at the fastest pace in history over the last year, mm -hmm. those bonds that all these banks have on their books have gone down in value, right? So it's mm -hmm. it's not just, and I'm, again, I'm 
I'm, uh, I, I, I'm not able to quote a source on this, but I did just recently see it and read it several times. And I have a degree in accounting. They have un, these banks have a lot of un, it's called unrealized losses, right? They mm -hmm. don't have to, the, 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 the bonds they own, if they had to sell them today are worth a lot less because yes. there's a inverse relationship between Absolutely. interest rates and bond prices. So that's okay. As long as the as long as the depositors don't show up wanting their money back, right? They can, That's correct. They can wait. They can wait those bonds out until they mature and they'll get their full face value. But if people say, "I want my money," "I want my money," and they're forced to liquidate those bonds, well, they're only getting eighty cents on the dollar now because nobody wants to buy a a a, 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 a treasury bond that has twenty years left on it at two percent when they can go get five percent on a two year bond. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I'll, and I'll zip it here soon, Pat, it's as an old accountant, after the financial crisis, they had this, you know, mark to market rules were changed. Mm -hmm. And it's called, you know, people in the accounting world called it Disneyland accounting, right? Yes. Because these banks are all sitting on a bunch of unrealized losses. So I don't know if it's the derivatives, maybe it's a combination thereof. But it's a, uh, it's a situation where, if people show up wanting their money, I'll, I think there's potentially more banks that could be potentially, right? Speculation that it could be uh, in trouble. <laughs> yeah. We'd like to thank our sponsor, First Mining Gold. They're a Canadian gold developer with two world-class projects in Canada. They also have a handful of other projects when you total up all the gold in their resources, it comes to over 12 million ounces. They're worth checking out. I'll put a link to the company's website in the description below. Like I said, I don't want to be overly dramatic, but it is a precarious situation right now because the lack of information we have on what is causing these banks to go down. Now, we know there's runs on the bank. We get that. We understand that. But, you know, Biden keeps telling us that everything's OK. The banks, you know, are highly capitalized. And, you know, we have uh, I, they they use the same words over and over again. You know, basically that this market is resilient. I don't think the market's resilient at all, gang. I mean, if they can't, uh, the United States government can't borrow more money right now. It's a very, very precarious situation because they've got to fund the Exchange Stabilization Fund and the Plunge Protection Team, and they may find a squirrely way to do it that they don't even tell us. But, mm -hmm. but the fact remains, um, there, it, there's rumors swirling that there may be more bank issues coming up tomorrow. In fact, there was even a bank issue yesterday uh, in, I believe it was in San Francisco. Another bank closed its doors while there was a run going on on that bank. Uh, so, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, Go ahead. It, it, well, it was at, is it First Republic? The one First in, Republic. San, in San Francisco? In yeah, San that's Francisco. it. Yep. And so there's four banks that have closed their doors right now. Wow. So does that mean that you and I need to run to our bank and go get our, our money out? Well, I mean, honest to God, I'm not going to give anyone financial advice because I am not a financial planner. But right. I will tell you that I feel very comfortable having a level of security with gold and silver that I do physically. I'm very comfortable with that. I am not nervous right now, despite what's going on. Hopefully, all of your listeners, all of your viewers are also feeling very comfortable right now holding on to physical gold and silver. And we'll get to how that applies to this here in a second. But this yeah. is the clarion call, gang. Pay attention. You know, see what's going on, uh, see what else happens, uh, particularly starting Monday. I'm looking for uh, how Wall Street is going to deal with this, uh, how stocks are going to do, how bonds are going to do. I'm looking at all of it. We're looking for bank closures. And that's not what the Missouri Freedom Initiative does, but that's what I do. I mean, I come from the Truth, Money and Freedom podcast. I'm a derivative of another YouTube channel. And <laughs> Um, that's what we did as a group for a long, long time before I branched off, you know, to do stuff specific to the state I live in, which is Missouri. But I am definitely paying attention and I get information from different sources and we're watching this and it, I mean, we're watching it full time now. Um, in it, fact, and, it, I was, and it's and it's getting very interesting. Well, it's getting interesting. And then also to um, why I'm watching this is because Ron and I are watching very closely 19 states. 
that have yeah. gold and silver legislation going on in their states. Now, one thing I found interesting, now I'm going to switch gears, Idaho. Mm -hmm. Idaho is going for that uh, a depository of sorts. Now, it, it, it's, the language is a little bit ambiguous in, in, their law, er, in, in their legislation. It's not saying a depository, but it's a depository for all intents and purposes. And it's in hyperdrive. It is going so fast through their legislature. So Idaho may have sniffed out banking problems a week ago, two weeks ago, because that bill just got filed on the 21st of February. In fact, I remember talking to you the day it was filed. Yep. yep. So and they're, they're jamming it through. They are. They're jamming it through. Yep. And, and I think then, it'll be interesting when you talk about Tennessee and I'll let mm -hmm. you announce the results of the vote there but tennessee was great because what we saw in tennessee was um and they're going this is a depository that they're doing they're working towards and that vote went through their house 98 to 0 98 wow. in favor of a gold and silver depository physical gold and silver depository in their state and there was no one who voted against it that is wild and, and and, and can I interject some? Because I actually made a video about Tennessee. I think it went out this morning. What I found interesting in the Tennessee legislation is they listed what can be considered specie, gold and silver, what, what they considered as part of the uh, allowable uh, metals. It covered everything. <laughs> I was yep. like, number one, they did do 98 to nothing. And I appreciate Pat actually shared this information with me initially. But when you read through what they consider to be gold and silver, mm -hmm. they didn't leave anything out. You know, I mean, they yep. almost talked about my wife's earrings in there or yep. something. It was it was crazy. Yep. States are getting very, very concerned with the Federal Reserve and the federal government and the just the unrestrained uh, printing that's been going on. We know they're going to raise the cap. I meant Ron and I are not soothsayers. We, we don't have crystal balls in our basements, but this is just common sense, gang. They're going to raise the cap. They're going to do it and they're going to do it and say it's an emergency. They're going to claim they're going to claim that this is the reason the banks are going down is because, you know, we can't get into more deficit spending right now. And we need to. Uh, but the fact of the matter is the states are paying attention. They're watching this and they're watching the value of their investments in their reserves go down in bonds because yeah. they, they have to contractually they've got to hold it in bonds too they can't go speculating on a whole lot of stuff so mm -hmm. the states want to make sure that their pension funds are shored up and they don't buy derivatives they buy bonds and the bonds are going down in value because of what the federal government and the federal reserve is doing they have no control over that but they have to hold bonds now they want to hold something else gold and silver is the way to go and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what state the uh the activity level on sound money legislation this year is astounding gang i have been paying wow. attention to this for a long time uh back in uh 2011 uh 2010 2011 time frame six states six states were going and, and that's when gold and silver were going nuts ron do you remember that in 2000 oh yeah absolutely yeah. this time is different gang Something else is happening here. The states are paying much more attention to the financial aspects of what's happening to their investments that they have to hold, you know, for their pension funds. And they're seeing it go down in value rapidly and the printing continue. And the spending cap is probably going to be removed here within the next week or two. And I don't know what else to say, gang. Gold and silver historically is what we've always, always had as a cult. As, uh, it doesn't matter where you live in the world. I was going to say culturally, but it is cultural. And it doesn't matter if it's the United States or if it's India or if it's China. It's always gone back to gold and silver, not yeah. Bitcoin. You know, not uh, uh, tulip bulbs. You know, it's always been gold and silver. No, and you, it, it, John, John Exter's pyramid, who, by the way, was a Federal Reserve governor and just died back in 2006. It always goes back to gold and silver. And that's yep. what we're seeing with the states now. I mean, states are taking quick, quick action. Do you think, I'm going to go off on a little tangent here, but do you think that what we're starting to see a little more than a rumble, right, over the last yeah. week with the financial system, do you think? You know, there is, I, I've, I've tried to drive this point home over the last year. There is so much mm -hmm. debt out there. It's not just government debt either, right? We That's correct. 31 trillion, 
credit card debts at record high, student mm -hmm. loan debts at record high, car debts at record high, mortgage debts at record high, corporate debts at record high. There's an unbelievable amount of debt in this country. And um, compared to, let's say, the late 70s, when Volcker was able to raise rates like crazy, I've been saying like, you know, over the last year, when 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 the Fed has raised rates at a record pace, not to a record level, but a record pace, but they went from what, like 0.5 to 4.5, it's still a significant increase. That when that hits that massive pile of debt, that it just, you know, boom, that's going to be a big thing. Do you think maybe that we're that the what's that saying? The hens are coming home to roost. I mean, mm -hmm. do you think that possibly there's there's a fracture in the dam or a crack oh, yeah. in the dam. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, I'll accentuate what you just said. With record levels of debt comes record levels of default. And it's and it doesn't matter if it's, you know, your car loan, if it's your credit card, or if it's a government, you know, yeah. with their spending. Uh, the same thing happens. And I'll I'll tell you there was some news. I believe it was on Thursday it came out. The Federal Reserve said uh that the new digital dollar will not be tied to the dollar. So that's there was an interesting news piece on that. So I was worried about that because I had to wonder if they were going to stuff all the dollar debt into the new digital dollar and just enslave us until the end of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and remember, folks, Biden created an executive order. It is not legal. It is not constitutional. There is nothing that makes a digital dollar legal with the current constitution and amendments, even the 16th Amendment, because in the 16th Amendment, if you read the Federal Reserve Act, which is a larger aspect of it, they have to print something. It's got to be on paper. So even mm. the digital, you know, trans, you know, digital transfers of dollars is legal. Digital tra transfers of digital dollars is not legal. So there's, there's, this is another, I'm, I'm sorry, going to take us off in a different direction here for That's a quick okay. second, because I'm a legislative guy. There's legislation all around the country right now, and it's based on UCC uh, codification or basically uh, commercial contracts in between states. And there's legislation in every state to deal with this where they sneak in the digital dollar. Now, we just found this in Missouri. It's House Bill 1165, and we're, our group is looking at it very closely. We're uh, partnering up with another group uh, that actually has an attorney that's comparing this to South Dakota's version, which was vetoed by their governor. So guys, right now, as th there's a lot of distraction out there. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't watch popular media, but maybe the Kardashians are doing something to distract you right now too. Uh, I don't know. I can't, I can't <laughs> stop watching dancing with the stars. I'm just, okay. I'm a, I'm addicted to that show. Pat. Okay. It's all I do. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Well, just, I'll tell just you what. joking. Yeah, I know. I know. But there are people out there like it. You know, right. that that are not paying attention. There is a lot of distraction out there right now. But this this legislation that's being entered into all these states, it's a latecomer to the Missouri legislative docket. I believe it's the very end of February and mm -hmm. the same thing in South Dakota. So it's a latecomer um, to everyone's docket. And it includes all it, but its codification of law that was instituted in D.C. And by the way, I'm not getting too far off the mark here. Stay tuned, gang. Um, that was caught or th that was done in DC in 2022 about how interstate commerce is actually run. Now that is constitutionally part of the United States government, but the states decide what they want to do and then they go to the federal government, you know, for codification on the federal level. So, you know, these these treaties in between states, and by the way, the constitution talks about treaties in between the states. Because that's one of the things the federal government was supposed to do is regulate trade and regulate has an entirely different meaning. Don't want to go down there right now. Uh, not regulate is in red tape. That's not right. Uh, regulate in a, a 1750s dictionary mean to make efficient. <laughs> right. So so that's what regulate the word uh, meaning changes over time. And but regulate. Wouldn't you, but, but wouldn't you say that that our government, I mean, that that one word efficiency just <laughs> describes our government? Pat? It sure Sorry. does. They are incredibly efficient at distracting us. They're incredibly efficient at wasting money. <laughs> They're incredibly efficient at growing beyond the ability of us to fund them. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're they're efficient in a lot of things. They're efficient yeah. at using, you know, people who wear green suits to go over to other countries and, and do bad things. 
uh, you or, know, or deficient. Maybe they're deficient in a few things as well. Yeah. Uh, the so, uh, go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. This, go ahead. Well, I was going to finish up here. So this language that we found in Missouri, we found in multiple other states as well. We're following a story right now where the South Dakota governor vetoed sections of this bill. It's a huge bill. It's the biggest bill I've ever seen in Missouri, 103 pages long. And so there, there's, you know, an ambiguous nature to this whole thing. But I encourage those of you who are watching Ron's Basement to look for language in your state having to do with uh, uh, universal charge codes or something or universal commercial codes or something like that. But mm -hmm. basically what it is, it's contracts for how interstate commerce is conducted. And in this, uh, they talk about, you know, literally, uh, decentivizing bitcoin and incentivizing a digital dollar this is the wow. language we've been looking for we were looking for a way they were going to sneak the, the digital dollar legally into every state i think we found it and so we've been working on that that's uh separate from what we're talking about today but the guys it's going through at breakneck speed in some states and um and by the way in missouri it seems to to be a rhino issue rhinos or republicans or republicans in name only seem to be the ones that are championing this bill through um and i think the same thing was true in south dakota um wow. so you have to be careful who you elect into office too because they will sneak things in on you and mm -hmm. so so okay now we're going to switch tracks right back to where we should have started uh when i started talking about ucc and that is the gold and silver legislation happening in so many states at the same time. And certain states are fast tracking this. I hope to see that in Missouri when spring break is over. Uh, because mm -hmm. we have, yeah, it, leave it to government to have spring break in the winter, right? Um, right. But Missouri government is on spring break right now. They don't come back until the 20th. I mean, I'd look at a calendar, but I do believe it's the 20th. Uh, yeah, that is correct. Okay. On the 20th is when they come back. The day before spring starts is when they come back from spring break, by the way. Once again, that's the efficiency <laughs> of government. Uh, they wanted to make sure they got it in before. Yep. Uh, yeah. So we're looking forward to get SB 100 into a House committee. It's been sitting in the House for literally a month a month just sitting there without a home, without a committee. We have a handler, and that's Dirk Deaton, but we don't have a committee to put it in so we can actually start moving this bill forward again. Um, now, I, I don't know what's happening with the others after they've gone through hurdles in other states. They mm -hmm. may be waiting as well. I don't know. But I do know Idaho is just moving super fast. Tennessee, super fast. Uh, Mississippi is going pretty quick, too. I mean, if 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 Tennessee uh, would did it pass their house, is that right? Their that's house, correct. Ninety eight well, yeah. to nothing. That's a pretty good indication that it's uh, popular. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, and once again, Tennessee has a lot to lose. Alaska yeah. has a lot to lose. Missouri has a lot to lose, gang, because they're holding bonds. Yeah. They're holding bonds in your state for your state pension fund uh, for, uh, you know, and will we talk about reserves? This could be money that was earmarked for a project. They're not starting for two years, you mm -hmm. know, and, and then that money is just sitting there in bonds wasting away, you know, or I'm yeah. sorry, losing value is the proper way to put it. I don't want to give anyone the wrong impression here. Wasting away is not the right way to put it. Bonds are always going to be worth something as long as there's a dollar. And I'm not an idiot. I understand this. Right. But but losing value while we have high inflation, this yep. is what silver and gold was designed to protect us from. Yeah, yeah. Losing losing value on a principal level, uh, but also losing uh, in regards to uh, high inflation is just eating away at the at the actual face value of the bonds. I mean, you're kind of getting bonds have been bonds last year have been hit. You know, I mean. I think I saw average, uh, I mean, you know, and it depends on the duration of the bond and the issuer, but bonds were down, I think on average, like 10 to 15%, uh, just the prices on the bonds, that That's doesn't correct. even factor in the 10% they lost to inflation on top yep. of it. So it starts to get significant, um, mm -hmm. it starts to get real significant. Yeah. And when you look at the fact that these bonds never, ever, ever, when they expire, they go back into the bond pool. They never take them back because if they take the, the bonds out of circulation, they got to take the corresponding money, or I'm sorry, currency 
out of circulation yeah. as well. And they don't want to do that. That's why our debt keeps escalating out of control. And I have a feeling they're lying about how much debt we have. I think we have significantly more. And I'm talking about public debt here. Right. I'm not talking about credit because credit card, I think they're reporting on really well. The same thing with student sure. loans, uh, car loans. And by the way, they've actually set up derivative structures on credit card debt. So you can actually bet on whether or not people are going to pay off their credit card. Um, you know, this is a really, really, really stupid situation we find ourselves in financially. This is, we're talking about a casino, the, the entire financial structure in America and worldwide has become a giant casino. And the mm -hmm. house always wins, folks. It's not yeah. you. You will not win this. This is yeah. literally the house. They're going to win. And yeah. they're going to take all your money with you or with them. Yeah. They're taking it away. I'm sorry, gang. Yeah. Uh, get out of debt. Well, Go ahead. Look, look, look what happened uh, after the, the great financial crisis, right? I mean, mm -hmm. when they do lose and when they should lose and lessons should be taught, instead, nobody gets in trouble. And uh, and we bail everybody out, and everybody lives happily ever after, right? Yeah, I mean that's, right. that's the that's the you yeah. know instead. But but but, but and it's like socialism for the for the elite, for the rich. Yep. Yeah, right. And you know. Yeah. And it's a, a, once again, a very strange situation because in 2008, I, re, I saw this coming in 2007, by the way, I made lifestyle changes, huge lifestyle changes in the winter of 2000, late winter, about this time period uh, in yeah. 2007, because I saw the collapse coming on the, on the housing market. Mm -hmm. And so I even moved, I actually moved because of that. I saw it coming, but I thought it was the end. Right. Wow. Yeah. So, but what we didn't know, Ron, what we couldn't understand is they were going to go to negative interest rates in one third right. of the world. We didn't yeah. expect that they were going to bail out banks because America doesn't do that. We don't do that. Um, literally, it's supposed to be free markets, right, Ron? I mean, we're supposed right. to, a bank is supposed to be able to sink or swim based on its own merits. If it's been a, a very, very responsible bank, it should do very, very well. But no, they're investing in yeah. these weird derivative products fancy financial right. products right. and um, if they and if they and if they do well with those that's great if they don't and they blow the system up well then we'll come in and bail you out and make everything okay right yeah. i mean that's that's, that's right that's, that, that that's a that that teaches a powerful lesson ha ha right well, isn't I mean, it interesting that the american people are not too big to fail right isn't that interesting yeah. but banks yeah. are Banks are, right. pharmaceutical companies, uh, airline com they're too big to fail. I mean, we can right. go down the list, but the American car companies, people- companies, yep. car companies, too but big to fail, right. But it's, it's, it's free markets as far as the government's concerned on the people. They have yeah. to make good decisions, but unfortunately, the media and the government literally encourage people to make bad decisions, and so does the Federal Reserve. When you continue yeah. to print money, people will take out debt at those low interest rates. They will yeah. do it. And it, governments do it too, gang. It's not just you and me and, you know, and your neighbor. It's your government too. Um, everyone starts right. spending like, you know, like drunken sailors. And why not when the interest rates are, you know, you're paying 3% interest rate on money you're borrowing. You can make money on that and, you know, come out ahead. But when things turn sour, suddenly there's a bank closing here. There's a bank closing there. There's a run on the bank here. You know, all that stuff is going on, um, you know, get out of debt. I mean, I don't oh, know yeah. what else to say. I mean, that and by the, I am not a financial advisor. I am not. And I, I'm not sure Ron is either. No. But but I would get out of debt. And if you have money left over, you got to start thinking about food, gold and silver, you know, um, you know, things of that nature. Because yeah, I, food, I'm not I, I'm not a financial advisor. I do have a degree in accounting from a top flight university and i did work for a big four accounting firm so i understand money and what you said is absolutely when people ask me you know uh and they do i say number one get out of debt okay mm -hmm. and you can make an argument that oh you can you know maybe a mortgage is okay whatever you know but just realize no matter what it is if you borrowed money and you have that money in another product, maybe a stock or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you're using borrowed money to, yep. you know, and you're running a risk. You know, if you get yourself completely out of debt, 
you get ahead of the game and I will preach that till the very end. Then you can take risk, right? And if it blows yeah. up on you, no big deal, right? You're well, still whole. The concept is very simple is, uh, you know, businesses uh, being in huge debt, they'll get bailed out, but they're not going to bail out you, Ron. The government no. is not going to swoop in with a check and say, here's some money, you know, uh, here you go. You know, sorry, you know, for all the problems you're having, you're too big to fail. You are not going to get that check from the government. But no. you know who is? Banks. Uh Banks yeah. will get that. Uh, their bad behavior, their bad decision-making process, you know, uh, notwithstanding, they will get bailed out because they're, quote, unquote, too big to fail. And so, but it, you and I will never, ever get that bailout. So that's why people like Ron and I, who are not financial consultants, by the way, um, we, we <laughs> advise people generally not to have a lot of debt and to get out when times are getting bad because debt is how they will control you. Yeah. They, don't and, don't and, make any don't make any financial decisions based on anything Pat or I said today. Yeah. Also, don't divide. Don't decide to get engaged, divorced, adopt a puppy. Don't do anything. Right? We're yeah. just we're just giving our our opinions. I found something interesting last night. To circle back to gold and silver real quickly, uh, and I heard this from a friend of mine who's in the in the coin bullion business. Uh, Apparently, gold and silver sales are going pretty crazy this weekend. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy on Twitter, Michael at Silver Squeeze, and he kind of follows the uh, the COMEX inventories and kind of publishes the LBMA and COMEX inventories. But he also tracks AppMex, you know, the big online retailer. Mm -hmm. And he said that according to his data, AppMex yesterday sold more precious metals than any other Saturday in 2022 or so far in 2023 and he noted that he saw massive amounts of silver and gold being added to the inventory mm -hmm. like he'd never seen before and that it was all just getting gobbled up so yep. that's you know that uh, in yeah. interesting situation we're heading into this week and, and in a free market supply and demand rules the roost right Except right. for, you know, yeah. except for, you know, I remember in, I'm, I'm trying to remember the year it was, I was uh, trying to buy silver. I ended up with uh, 100 ounce bars, you know, because I couldn't yeah. get anything else. I can't remember the year, but um, silver was so cheap, but you couldn't get it. You couldn't get it despite how cheap silver was. And I remember them raising, and this, this might've been 2011 gang. Mm -hmm. This might have been 2011, but, but, uh, but I remember I was, I was like going, whoo, you know, wiping the sweat off my brow, you know, Hey, I was able to get those hundred ounce silver bars, you know, for what was it? $2 and nine cents over spot per ounce. Wow. And, but the, I remember silver Eagles being at, um, gosh, darn it. I'm mean, thinking it was nine or $10 mm -hmm. over a uh, spot per ounce. That was the premium at the time, but there wasn't any to sell. No wow. one had them. You couldn't get it. And now yeah. you could go to the extreme aftermarket, you know, on eBay. And I'm, I'm talking right. about the major de dealers, gang. I'm not talking about your yeah. eBay folks because they always have silver to sell. And whether or not it's real, I don't know. I don't buy it that way. But, um, but I guess it's a clarion call warning to the states right now. The, the, what's going on in the banking sector is extremely important and you need to pay attention. Because mm -hmm. this is the uh, a symptom of a larger problem that's coming down the pike quickly, in my opinion. And the digital dollar will be the solution. If, if anyone needs a takeaway from this video today, it is that the federal government and the Federal Reserve put us, put us in the situation we're in right now. Banks are starting to pop like June bugs under, you know, tractor trailer tires. And they've got a solution. No worries. Even though they caused the problem, they've got a solution. And that solution includes digital enslavement. You know, is this the way we want to go? This is a critical time right now in American history. Right now, as Ron and I are making this video, where the people can step forward and say, no more. We want gold and silver as money. States are doing it. Support the legislation in your states, gang. I mean, get this done so you have another option so you're not left literally at the feet of the beast, literally clamming up for bowls of millet saying, please, sir, can I have some more when you want to drive five miles away and they've locked down your digital wallet because you said something anti-government on Facebook.
I mean, yeah. it, it sounds like I'm making something up right now, but this is the kind of tyranny that's coming down the pike. Very interesting. We are we are living in interesting times. We are indeed. Thank you, Pat. Hey, thank you, Ron. Always a pleasure to be in the basement. I'm hoping, uh, you know, I used to say that that bear's going to have to wait a while. I'm starting to think <laughs> that bear's, the bear's not going to have to wait as long as I originally thought. Well, there's a lot of my viewers who, who, who are happy to hear you say that, and uh, he's ready. You know, yeah, the bear's starting to, you know, he's starting to move a little bit. So we'll see what, uh, we'll see what the coming weeks and months uh, bring for the bear. Hopefully we'll, maybe we'll, we'll have you here for the, uh, the, uh, the blindfold removing ceremony. Oh, that'd be wonderful. That'd be, yeah, because <laughs> I could see it now. Instead of the blindfold, he's got those, you know, the ridiculously oversized, you know, Florida beach sunglasses on. Yeah, he's holding right. a gold. beer, you know. Yeah, gold, gold. <laughs> we'll get, get yep. him some gold, big gold glasses, right? There yeah, you go. So. There you go. It runs. Thanks for all your work. On behalf of my viewers, thanks for coming back on the on on, on Ron's basement and sharing your insights and knowledge and, and all your work you're doing. Just so everybody knows if they want to get a hold of Pat, um, uh, they can go to why don't yep. you tell them the best way? Go, go to the website, uh, mofree.org. And I realize it's not updated. I don't have time to do that right now, gang. Um, but there's an email list you can get on through the website. Uh, my email address is patrick at mofree.org. If you want to just email me and say, put me on your list, uh, you know, we'll do that too. Any way you guys want to do it. And I want to say something about your viewers. Is some of the nicest folks I have ever encountered. You know, basically, I am behind. I am eight days behind on email right now. But guys, I mean, I hit a limit. I, I had to work on another project here real quick. We had knock and shock this past week. And then uh, stuff that came up after knock and shock dealing with the treasurer. So I had a lot of stuff on my plate, but I will get back to emails, those emailing um, and wanting uh, specific done in their states. But I want to say, uh, give a shout out to all of your viewers and say, you guys are just wonderful. Um, and thank you very much for what you're doing in your states, you know, uh, you know, trying to get gold and silver as legislation, if it's not there already, very important. And, and you guys are awesome. Keep it up. You guys are doing a great job. Well, and thank you on behalf of my viewers. I'll say again, thank you, Pat, because you're, uh, you're definitely, uh, I know leading the charge, uh, from a grassroots perspective in Missouri, but I know you're helping a lot of people all over the country as well. So doing everything I can. You and bet. I know you're I know you're working yourself to the point of exhaustion on many days. So mm -hmm. um, thank you. You bet. You bet. All right. All right. You we'll take see care, you. Buddy. We'll see you in a few weeks. Okay. You bet. God bless all you, right. buddy. Yep. See you, Pat. Bye. Bye bye.